Hello? Can you hear me? Hang on here. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Um, wow. Uh, hey, thanks for all coming. Uh, things are changing so fast. I, I, I've, I put together about 18 PowerPoints and uh, and everything is changing so fast, I'm not sure which way to go a lot of times. I've got my standard PowerPoint on, but you know, uh, if you really want to know about my work, I've got books back there and DVDs, and you can, you can read about it. I've been essentially studying alchemy for about 30 years, and I've uh, uncovered a cross in the south of France that basically predicts, it's a 400-year-old cross, built by an alchemist, and it basically predicts that the end of time is going to occur, occur uh, between the years of 1992 and 2012. And this was a uh, research that was done completely, uh, uh, you know, uh, n without any knowledge of the, of the exactitude of the Mayan calendar. And uh, ironically, uh, John Major Jenkins and I lived about 15 miles apart from each other while the research was, his research on the Mayan calendar was reaching its crescendo, and my research on the cross of Hende was reaching its crescendo, and we didn't know each other. And we met 10 years ago, and we had a great relationship ever since, comparing notes and trying to figure out all these things. But 10 years ago, in 1998, when we were just finishing up with uh, all this research, uh, you know, I, I was like, okay, you know, I was a journalist, and I discovered this, and I didn't know whether it was true or not. And so I said, I'll sit back, and I'll watch, and we'll see what unfolds. So um, you have the uh, PowerPoint up? PowerPoint. Yoo-hoo. PowerPoint. Hello? Yeah, we're talking to you. PowerPoint? Uh, can you click on one so we can start and know where we are? Anyway, so um, I'm going to run you through that real fast. But, you know, uh, so anyway, uh, it's pretty obvious now to me that the world is reaching the end of this age. And I don't have any more doubt about it because everything is collapsing so fast. And uh, so, you know, we can say, we can, we can wax, uh, you know, uh, fearful about what's about to happen because the greatest, uh, the greatest catastrophe in human history is unfolding in front of us. It's a huge crisis and it's systemic and it's, it's not going to go away. It's going to get worse and worse. Unfortunately, if you are a follower in this world economy, the future is going to look grim for you. If you are not a member of the world economy, you're probably going to be all right. And uh, so they've, they've, they've kind of hoodwinked themselves into believing in this false security of, of a world that was built on an infrastructure of uh, commodity speculation, uh, uh, printing up money, and it was all false and it wasn't real. The only real things in the world as far as an economy are, are transportation, manufacturing, and agriculture. There's nothing else, okay? Everything else is just stuff they stick up there. And what we've done today is we've addicted ourselves to oil. Uh, we sold all our manufacturing jobs off to other countries, and um, our agriculture is all based on oil. And oil's now at $60 a barrel, but soon it'll be back up as soon as... Uh, uh, the election's over, they will uh, be jumping it back up and it'll get back up to $150, $200, you'll see. And, and you're going to see a lot of problems really begin to happen as society begins to collapse at that point. I guess I don't get a PowerPoint, right? Okay. And uh, so, what is this all about? And, and what can we do about it? That's really the question. And, and, and we, I could go on with alchemy and I could show you all these incredibly spiritual things that predict this. And, and we, but I think we're already beyond that. We already know that the Mayans were right. We already know that the end of this age is at hand. And if anyone doesn't believe it, they will very soon. Okay, so let, let's just dispense with is it happening and go to the next level. Okay, it's happening, so what do we do? That's really where we are now and where we're going to be going for the next four years. And, and four years can happen really fast. So basically, you guys know about The Secret, you know, the great movie that sold 60 million DVDs or whatever. 
And the secret actually is the secret. It's the secret that has been esoterically hidden for millennia. And it, it actually, it is a superficial telling. The movie The Secret is a superficial telling of the great secret. And so the secret tells you that, you know, that, that, that this universe is, uh, uh, this is malleable, a plastic, malleable universe, and that you can rearrange it with your consciousness. That's basically the secret of alchemy, the secret of all secrets, okay? And, it, 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 and, and rich people, and I know a lot of rich people, they all know this and have known it for years, and that's how they made all their money. And, but the problem with the secret is, is that it's teaching you how to get, you know, sex. It's teaching you to live in, that if you want to be really happy, you need a 15 bedroom house in Beverly Hills. And um, it, it, it's just not going to work. So, you know, the Chinese say, be careful for what you ask for, because you'll get it. And so in the secret, what they didn't teach you is that you have to have discipline for what you ask for. Because you will ask for something, and then you'll find out you actually didn't want it. And you'll screw your life up. So you've got to be really careful. So the whole point of, of, of knowing the great secret of consciousness is to be really careful what you're asking for. You know, you don't ask for... You ever see this movie Bedazzled with Brendan Fraser? He gets anything he wants. He gets, the devil gives him three wishes. And he wants to be a rich guy. And he wakes up and he's a Colombian drug dealer, right? <laughs> with the U.S. military coming after him, you know? But he's rich, you know? So he got what he wanted. Anyway, he never gets what he wants. It's a great movie if you want to know the downside of the secret. And, um, is it on yet? Okay. You can flip to the next one, please. Yeah, if you could put it up, thanks. So anyway, um, what 2012 is about is it's the secret of the secret. And it's, it's saying, okay, we now know the secret. You know, big deal. I can get anything I want if I really work at it and, and dream about it. And you will, if you, know, if you, if, if you do it right in a, in a compassionate way. But what 2012 is about is we are collectively deciding what kind of world we want in four years. And this is the first time that I can think of in human history that this has occurred. That any group of people is collectively considering what world is going to be there in four years. We think about next month. We might even think, if you're a business person, you're thinking, you know, three months. But, you know, if you're pregnant, you're thinking nine months maybe. But you're not thinking much more beyond that. And now we're actually thinking, what kind of world do we want? And if we all... We don't, we don't have to agree on it, but by having a discussion, we're going to reach a consensus. And what, you know, there's all these conspiracy theories running around these days about, you know, the dark sorcerers who run the planet and all this, and the web is filled with all this stuff. But what really is going on is that the wealthy people know the secret and have been using it, and it looks like dark sorcery to all the people who don't know the secret. And so they, they've built a future that they want, and now it's time for us to build a future that we want. And that's what this is really all about. Could you flip to the next one, please? We're going to flip through here. Click. Hello? Okay. Anyway, uh, we'll get that together before the end of the lecture. Um, so um, th th that, that's really the question is what kind of world do we want to build? Now, you guys know about this guy. Um, he lives up in Seattle. His name is Cliff. He has two names. You don't know his real name. Cliff Webbot or Cliff High. Anybody know him? Raise your hands if you know who I'm talking about. Cool. You're going to love this story. Okay, so we're going to call him Cliff Webbot because you don't want anybody to know who he is. Cliff Webbot's a genius, and he worked for Microsoft, and he retired about 12 years ago with a million bucks, or two million bucks or something, and he, did, he wrote a program. He's a, he was a genius programmer, and he wrote a program ostensibly to get rich on the stock market, purely selfish reasons, which, you know, makes you immediately want to pay attention to what he's doing. And... What, what, what he, he, he can speak like 30 different languages. And so he wrote this program, and this program trolls through every single thing that's going on on the Internet, every website, every email that's public, every newspaper, magazine article, everything. And he collates in, on all these different languages, and he collates this information, and he runs it through this thing, and it tells him the emotional content of what is happening in the moment. 
And I first heard about Cliff in June of 2001 when I got an email from a wacky friend of mine. I guess all my friends are wacky. Uh, a friend of mine who said, look at this. So I read it. And I, I read about the program. I said, it seemed kind of interesting. And then he said, here's what I'm reading. I'm reading that in the late summer... Uh, here's the emotional words I'm reading. Um, High-rise buildings, airplanes, bombs, terrorists, many die. So I thought, wow, I wonder what that means. So, you know, I put it aside, and then 911 happened. So now I was paying attention to this guy. So in, in 2005, he came out with the next alert, and he said, flood, southern city, many die, uh, big storm, high winds. So I said, okay, and then Katrina happened. So now I've got his stuff on my wall, and I'm, you know, I'm watching him now. So he's been right about 20 straight times in little ways. But about a year ago, he came up and he said, I'm getting the biggest reading ever. And it's saying October 6, 2009, or 2008. So, you know, I put it on my wall, and every, all my friends were watching Cliff and seeing what's going to happen in the world. And, um, and that's just, that was the height of the, of the crash, that October 6 was the height when we were at the worst. So now, everybody in the know, and you guys are now in the know, is paying attention to Cliff. We want to know what he's finding, right, in the next few years. And Cliff is a completely, totally cool guy. He did like Zazen on top of of, 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 of eight thousand foot mountain for a week straight, and he was, you know, he, he practiced, He's a he's a martial artist, and he, he's brilliant. And so um, he got on this radio show, a friend of mine's radio show, and uh, and and, he, and I, I kind of fed the questions to this guy. I said, you know, ask him this, gonna ask him that. So he asked him. He said, okay, so what's going to happen now? And he says, well, the next big date is. Uh, uh, January 26, 2009, six days after the uh, um, president is not, uh, put into office. And, um, and he said, it's going to be a repercussion from what happened on October 6th. And then the guy says, okay, so what happens then? And he says, in summer of 2009, the United States, is, it looks like it's going to default on its, on its debt and, and declare bankruptcy. In 2010, the economy is going to get so bad, and then he stopped and he said, I don't really know how to say this because this is happening all over the world at the same time. It looks like there's going to be a worldwide revolution of, of, of uh, where at least 60 different countries, including us. And um, so now, you know, we're all sweating bullets listening to this guy. And I'm emailing the, the, D, the, the host, you know, ask him this, ask him this. And uh, so he says, okay, okay, uh, how far ahead can you project? And he says, well, I'm, I can project up to about 20. 12. And, uh, and he says, oh, come on, everybody's talking about 2012, tell us about it. So he says, well, this is where things get really weird. He said, there's, go there's going to be this economic collapse, and then there's going to be what he can only refer to as a revolution. He doesn't really want to use that word because he says what I'm getting is not really a revolution. It's something else, like a, a, an evolution almost. And then he said, then he said but what's really crazy is, is, and I know no one's going to believe this because it's only four years from now, but in four years, reading the emotional content of what people are saying, everyone is going to be return to the country into tribal communities by 2012 and growing your own food is going to be 80 percent of the work that you do every day and this is four years so I'm going wow you know this is really incredible and uh, it, and it goes right in with everything that that the Mayans are saying and everyone else is saying and it, it's incredible so but there's something else going on, which is really even more amazing. And, and, and it was like um, uh, Eric Gonzalez, the, the Mayan elder, he was talking about the, this is the beginning of the end of the fourth sun and the beginning of the fifth sun. And the cross of Hende uh, accentuates the sun. It has an angry sun on the facade. And so there's this strange sun motif that's going on in all these prophecies. And about four and a half months ago, for the first time, in recorded astronomical history, the sun lost its magnetic field, its heliosphere, it's called. Do you know what the heliosphere is? This is really cool. All right, so here's the sun. And the sun has an electromagnetic field around it. That's its heliosphere. 
Okay? And we're here. We're here in the heliosphere. Here's the Earth, right? Here's Venus. Here's Mercury. Right? We're actually in it. And this heliosphere is an electromagnetic field. And everything, in all of the gamma rays and synchrotron radiation that's coming from the center of the galaxy, by the way, is bouncing off this heliosphere and really not affecting us. Okay? Because we have it. It's a protective layer that the sun has that keeps us safe from radiation. That heliosphere disappeared about four and a half months ago. There's only been one sunspot and it was gone. Uh-oh. Hope I didn't screw this up. Oh, great. Now they're going to ch charge us for this one. Okay. Thank you very much, whoever gave me that. And um, anyway. Oh, I can get it off. Okay. So, um, so the heliosphere has disappeared, and what's going on is all, uh, the, the Ulysses spacecraft, uh, NASA sent a, 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 a craft up called Ulysses a few years ago, and it registered the amount of particles coming into the solar system, and the particles were overwhelmingly coming into the solar system from the center of the galaxy. Um, and so right now we're being um, uh, just inundated with all sorts of things that have never in recorded history since Galileo. Um, have come in to the earth. I don't know what this means, I'm just telling you that it's a weird coincidence that, that all these things are happening at once for the first time in recorded history. We don't have uh, uh, this protective layer around us. The sun is, 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 is and the analogy that I use is that the uh, center of the galaxy is like the great goddess and the sun is our protective father and our protective father has kind of disappeared and the information from the center of the galaxy galaxy is now getting through, which is eerily close to the Mayans' prophecies and their whole thing about the center of the galaxy lining up with the sun. And we don't know if any of this is actually a coincidence or what, we just know that it's happening. And, and so, wh what is it, you know, that's going on here? And, 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 and it is a, an ecstatic event. And, it's, and in alchemy, it's as above, so below. What happens in the heavens is reflected here on earth. What happens here on earth is reflected up in the heavens. So the heavens are, are, um, are, 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 are we've lost our protective layer. Uh, all sorts of knowledge, information, radiation, things we've never measured. We can't even measure it because it's never happened before. It's coming in. We don't even know what kind of machines to build to measure it because it's never occurred. So we don't know what to do. The scientists are worried about it. If you read the journals, they're very worried about what's going on right now and think that all sorts of radiation is getting in right now, which it probably is. And if you um, are familiar with the work of John Jenkins and you know that um, uh, 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 genetic mutation is frequently caused by these strange power downs that the sun goes through. Okay, so the sun is powering down, and we don't know why, and we don't even know how long it'll last. Uh, the heliosphere has disappeared, uh, the, and down here on Earth, the markets are crashing. Um, we're on the edge of a famine. Uh, they're not here, but in India and China, and we have um, the greatest crisis in human history unfolding in front of us. And our politicians aren't doing anything about it. Um, they're not even mentioning it. I'm sorry, Democrat, Republican, they're not even talking about it. I, I wrote a series of letters to Nancy Pelosi a year ago. I was on the History Channel and I did this show about the end of time and, and I kept writing her and saying, how come, you know, I thought the Democrats cared about us and why aren't you saying, telling people to prepare for what's happening? And her assistant wrote me back this little snarky letter, you know, you're just trying to cause a panic. And I was like, I'm not trying to cause a panic. I'm trying to like tell people what's going on, you know, and you guys have a responsibility to do it and they're not. And, and, and so I'm telling you right now, is, is we're moving into some seriously dangerous period. We're moving into a seriously dangerous period of time, but it's not a bad thing. This is where I differ from the gloom and doom people. I think it's a great thing. I think it's, it, this, if, we don't, if we don't stop what we're doing 
and change our ways now, forced on us or voluntary, we're going to be extinct in a hundred years. We, we have a chance to, to watch the old world die away and a new world be formed and we can be the ones who decide what it is that is going to happen. And we can use the internet and everything and we never had these kinds of things, these instruments before and it is a seminal moment in history and it's we, we must we cannot you know I, I just came back from Amsterdam and I did a documentary with John Lash and um, he wrote a book called Not in His Image which is a great book and I highly recommend it it's about the return of the goddess and he talks about the patriarchal religions and how they have created an abuser abused relationship with us where they're abusing us and, and, and we're accepting the abuse and then when we ask them why they're abusing us they tell us that they're doing it because they love us which is abuser abused relationship and we're constantly oh they love us they like well they don't act like they love us but you know maybe there's something here we can't figure out but you know we know that it's 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 bullshit and and and, and so this 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 the, this, this was formed at the end of the last age, this, this patriarchal society, probably for the best of reasons, to be honest with you. It was very dangerous and men were trying to feed their families and frankly, they went and killed people and stole their stuff and that's how it all got started. But now here, we're here at the end and, 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 and that world is dying and it's going to die on its own or we're going to kill it or it's going to kill us or we can transform it and that's our choices and so we have to say well you know what is it that we have to do and the first thing is you know right now today everybody here must become self-reliant there's there you cannot depend on the messiah on this abuser abused relationship to occur there's no messiah that's going to come save us there's nobody that's going to come save us We've got to come to grips with that there's no politicians there's nobody that's going to save us only we are going to save ourselves and we're going to do it with our wits and our intelligence and our ingenuity and and we've just got to get away from this thing where we've been indoctrinated to believe that there's some outside force it's aliens it doesn't matter they're going to come in and save us they're not our own society isn't going to save us it can't be saved it is over for it and we need to like celebrate this we need to say yeah things are out of control and you know what that's good because we were never in control so what are we worried about you know I mean come on and this is what this is what's going on in the entire world right now and we have to celebrate the fact that the edifices that supported this false economy this fiat money system this crazed world where you only where your businesses only have to make a profit for 90 days they don't have to worry about anything else just what happens in 90 days that's all you have to worry about. that is insane It's predatory capitalism it, it, it has to be outlawed but we're not going to get them to outlaw it so we just have to reject them that's the key to this. We have to reject them. We have to create our own scenes. We have to create our own communities. We have to reject every single thing that they are doing. Their wars, their pollution, their food, if you want to call it that, and all of the other things that they're doing. And they're doing it mindlessly. And we must forgive them and have compassion for them. But we shouldn't fall into what they're doing, into their games. And, and so Nostradamus said that at the end of time, there's this great bifurcation. The human race was going to split, he said. And a very small percentage are going to actually achieve a, a modicum of enlightenment. And the rest are going to fall into almost a wasteland of horror. And, and we must try to salvage as much of it as we can. But be careful. We don't want to salvage the system that caused all this. So we want to be careful about what we're asking for. You're not going to have all the material things that you have now it's just not going to happen very few people have it but the rest of us are not going to have it and you know what that's good because if we keep going on there's not going to be any forest left there's not going to be topsoil left there's not going to be any fish left it's going to be all gone thanks nuclear sunset Number four. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, so, 
what I'm trying to say is, is that um, uh, we need to Aikido the moment. We need to take the strength of our enemies and use that against them. We're not as strong as they are, but we can use their media, their internet, all the things that they've given us, and thank God we have these things, and, 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 it's, and it's truly a miracle. Technology is an incredible thing. And we need to use it to, um, I hate to use the term subvert the do, uh, dominant paradigm, but why not? And, and we need to undo what has been done. We need to go back to a more rural lifestyle. I know a lot of you aren't going to like that, but it's, it, it's going to be necessary. And, we've, it, 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 and we're going to create a world that is going to be a lot better. I mean it. We're going to be a lot happier. It doesn't seem like it now. So the next four years are going to be really not very good. But at the end of the four years, it'll be fine. One of my old friends, Terrence McKenna, used to say, we must live as if the apocalypse has already occurred. And what he's saying is that we must, we must live as if it's already after the end of this age. All of us. We must start now doing it. And if we do that, then we can create this future. It'll already be there by the time we need it. And so that's what really these 2012 conferences are about. How could, hey, thanks so much. Um, how can we create this future and what future is it that we want to create and I'm not going to dictate it to you I can't I don't know you know I just know a few simple basic things you know we definitely want to have enough food to eat we definitely want to love each other we definitely want to have a community we don't want to freeze to death there's a few things and that's all we need if we so if we make our collective secret our collective view of the world of the future we have to keep it really simple we can't make it complicated. We can't say we want a, a socialist paradigm where the workers take control of the factories or we want, you know, a world where everybody sits in meditation all day. These, are not gonna, these aren't going to happen, but what we can do is say, I want a world of community, of love, of, of nonviolence, and then we can, I think we can create a world that will work, but we're not going to create a world that can work if we go on like we are. Okay, now I'm going to run you through here because I want to show you the secret of the end of time. Okay, um, these are the symbols on the cross of Hendy. There's the angry sun. Keep going. Next. Keep going. Okay, uh, the, the star on, on it looks like the star in the tarot deck. The moon looks like the moon in the tarot deck. Keep going. The sun. Nope. I jumped ahead. The sun looks like the sun. And then the last one is the day of judgment. And that's the key to understanding the cross of Hende. Keep going. Uh, that, these are, this is Notre Dame Cathedral. Fulcanelli tells us that alchemists built the Gothic cathedrals. Uh, keep going. So I'm just going to show you some of the incredible architecture that's on these Gothic cathedrals. If you tried to build Notre Dame today, it would cost you about $2 trillion. If you could find the artists. Keep going. Which you couldn't. Um, keep going. I'm just going to get to the end here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of the ways that we interact, okay, stop there. That's the Earth's magnetic field, okay? And we, uh, if you ever go to the North Pole, you know that we have a magnetic field because you can see the aurora borealis come down from the top, right? That's the electromagnetism collapsing in on the, on the field. So the Earth has this donut-shaped field around it, which um, could be called its, its higher dimensional body or its 4D body. And uh, the Earth sits at the center of it. Let's go to the next one, please. Oh, this is the alignment of the center of the galaxy. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, there's the four signs that are at Chartres Cathedral, which I could get into, but you can read my book. Keep going. Keep going. That's Ophiuchus, which is the center of the galaxy. Very interesting sign. That's John Major Jenkins' uh, diagram from his book showing the galactic alignment in 2012. Keep going. 
Next. Next. There it is, the galaxy. Keep going. So this is a, a, a Taurus. This is a fourth dimensional object. Okay, I'm going to show you really quick how this is derived at. And I'm not using that one. Okay, so basically scientists, uh, uh, when, they, when, they, when they're when they trying to figure out dimensions, they do it like this. They have, they have a single dimension, and then they double the dimension, and they connect it orthogonally, and you have a two-dimensional object. And then what they do is, to create a three-dimensional object, they create two two-dimensional objects, and they connect them orthogonally, and that creates a three-dimensional object. And then to create a, a fourth-dimensional object, it gets more complicated, they build another cube, because you have to have two of them. And then, I'm doing the terrible job here, and they connect this orthogonally, it's called a hypercube. A Rubik's cube is a hypercube. It's got a cube in the center, and then 26 cubes around it. Okay? Scientists deal with squares. Alchemists deal with circles because we worship the goddess. So the circular version of the hypercube is this. Okay? It's a donut shape, and the vortex goes down and hardens and comes out the other side. So the energy comes down through the center and goes around and comes back around again, right? And it's infinite. Looks like an apple, doesn't it? Okay? So it comes down and around. This is the field that we have around our bodies. We have an electromagnetic field, and it's the spine. It comes out the top of your head, and it comes down around, and, and comes back in at the bottom of the spine. This is the auric field, you know, all the things that the New Age is always talking about. Well, this is what this is. This is our body's hyperdimensional field. And the coherence of your health, and how psychic you are, and all the things are determined by this field how coherent it moves when it spins through your body. Meditation, yoga, zen, all these things are designed to create a coherent field around your body. When you're sick, it's out of coherence. It's wobbly, it's jumping around. Uh, the field is, is, is not intact around your body. Sometimes you're, it can leave your body. Uh, if you take, like, um, what's that uh, really horrible drug that people take? Um, there's some horrible drug, uh, ketamine. Ketamine can actually remove your own body from the body. It's an animal tranquilizer. I highly do not recommend it. And um, so the Earth has, and we saw the Earth has it, and this is what this is. It's called a torus. It's a 4D physical object. Okay, next. Let's go to the next one, please. Okay, that's Jose Arguez's hyperbody. And you notice he has a cube in the center of it, just like the Rubik's Cube, because he's trying to show you the combination of, 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 of the hypercube with the hypertorus. And he's got the rainbow body in the center of it. Great, great drawing. Let's see the next one, please. And now, I will show you the secret of time. All right. So. All right. So this is a torus, right? The energy is coming down in a, in a spiral. It hits a, a null point in the center, comes back down through, comes around, comes back down through, okay? This is around your body. This is around the earth. The sun has it, although it's collapsed now. So the sun does not have this anymore, very interestingly, all right? So in, 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 in alchemy and in the yuga system, we divide time into four phases. Uh, we'll just simplify. It's the Golden Age, the Silver Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age. And we're in the Iron Age right now. This is the hardest time to be alive, according to these alchemists and Hindus. And the Golden Age lasts a really long time, and it's wonderful, and everybody's happy. And then things begin to slip in the Silver Age. Then in the Bronze Age, they get, start getting nasty. And in the Iron Age, they really get nasty. Horrible. Keep that up, please. Thanks. Um, so how does this work? And what's going on in 2012? Well, you notice that these vortexes in the center, how they spin down towards the center, and then they spin out from the center? See how they do that? Okay. Back when, when I was a kid growing up in Nebraska, we had tornadoes all the time. And all a tornado is is spinning air. Just like this, okay? It's spinning. But as it spins and, and, and really spins, the tip of the tornado turns as hard as a diamond. And it can rip apart 
train cars and throw semis 500 yards and put shafts of wheat like bullets into trees, okay? And it's just air, just spinning. But it takes on a hardness as it spins faster and faster to where it's harder than any stone that you could find, okay? And that's what's going on here. As we spin down towards the center of the, of the torus, everything hardens. That's why we're in the center of our torus because we're the hardened tip of this vortex. And, and when we die, all it's just the tip leaves and, and enters back into it. So it really isn't even death. But so, and, and our lives are, go in the same pattern. I'll show you how that works in a second. So the golden age is when we come out through the bottom and start going down. It's when the energy is expanding. And expands and it comes around the bottom lip and it keeps expanding until it hits the equator at the center. See? It's expanding the whole way from the time it enters out until it hits the equator. the Bronze Age is when it gets over to the top of the lip and starts going down. This is the fall, the famous fall that we all have to go through, I guess. And so we, we fall in the Bronze Age, and that happened 13,000 years ago. Each one of these ages is the same amount of years. So it takes 6,500 years to go from the tip to the equator, 6,500 years to go from the equator to falling down into the lip, then the first two-thirds of falling is 6,500 years, and that little black triangle, the Iron Age, that's also 6,500 years. So it's relative. Time is relative. It's, so when you're in the Iron Age, everything is speeding up. Each second is faster than the second before. Each minute is faster than a minute before. You think you don't have any time. You're, you're in a panic state, and, 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 and you don't know what to do. And one of, the, one of the analogies that I use uh, with this is, um, is the film Titanic. The film Titanic is, uh, you know, a lot of people don't like it, but it's an incredibly interesting film for a number of reasons. And one of the main reasons is that's the biggest hit of all time. So that uh, immediately makes me want to look at it. Because anything that everybody's going to has to have some kind of degree of importance. So I went to see it 10 years ago, by the way, it came out. And... Um, and the Titanic is a story. The thing about the movie Titanic is that we all know the plot before we come in. We know the ship's going to go down. You know, it's like there's no, you know, trepidation about it. We all know it's going to happen. We all walk into the theater. Everybody knows that the Titanic's going to sink. So why is anybody even coming to see the movie? So you know, I sat down, and people would see this movie like 30 times. Um, and 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 this is a story of this of of, of a civilization aboard a ship. And, it's, and, it's, and there's lower class, and there's upper class, and the lower class can't go up to the upper class, it's not allowed, and it's an iron ship, and it's, it's surrounded by wilderness, and one of the first lines in the movie is, not even God can sink the Titanic, right? And so there's incredible hubris involved in this idea that we can build a ship that nothing can sink. And so the captain, you know, he turns all the engines on because he wants to get to New from Liverpool to New York faster than any ship in history. And the first mate says, but captain, there's like ice fields out there. And he says, ah, you know, who cares? So they turn on the engine. But we all know in the audience, we're like, oh, you know, oh, no, you know. And what this is, is this is a perfect analogy of the Iron Age. Oh, you lost my, lost my space there, guy. This is the perfect analogy of the Iron Age. Can we go back to that? <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, it's a perfect analogy of the Iron Age. Our reaction times are speeding up, and there's no time to react when we see the iceberg. So, so and, and, and as we approach that null point, which I hope we get to soon, um, uh, as we approach down through the bottom of the Iron Age, every second it starts going so fast that pretty soon there's no time at all. That's 2012. It's the time of no time. We're actually going to go so fast, every second is going to unfold so quickly that we're actually going to run out of time. And we're going to have a disaster, I guarantee it, because you can't keep cutting your reaction times. There's too many possibilities, so eventually it's going to, we're going to hit something. We're going to hit an iceberg, it's, there's no doubt about it. It's just a matter of time, and you've got to be prepared for when that happens, because it is coming. But what's great about this is that we pop through the other side. 
Okay? And then every minute is longer than the minute before. Every second is longer than the second before. And in the, in the, in the, uh, in the uh, Vedas, they say that, that only in the Kali Yuga, only in the Iron Age, is prophecy really work. And the reason that prophecy really works in the Iron Age is, you see, as you fall down into that cone, the waves begin bouncing off that resilient um, uh, uh, membrane that's, that's holding time together, and it starts bouncing back. And so the Mayans could see the end of time because it was bouncing back at them. Nostradamus could see it. You can probably see it, frankly, with everything that's going on. So, you know, that's the uneasy feeling that we all have, is this bounce back quality. It's coming from, from this singularity that's waiting for us. And it's coming at us like a freight train. And, 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 and to, uh, to go back to where I started with this Cliff Webbot, the guy that invented this program, this is what he's watching. And he knows it, by the way. He's a very, very intelligent guy. And this is what he's watching. He's watching this, and he knows that something is going to happen in 2012. You know about the remote viewers, right? The military hired all these remote viewers, and they sent them to go look at what the world would be like after 2012. And they all came back, like 30 of them, and said, I can't get past 2012. So they, they could go anywhere they want in the past. They could go all the way up to 2012, but they can't get past December 21st, 2012. I don't know what it means, but it is worrisome. And so this is what's going on, and, 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 and we're, we're, we're speeding up so fast that we're, we're going to have a collision. Um, uh, uh, psychopathic people are going to get into power, like they haven't already. And, they, and, 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 uh, and so we must expect you know, anything can happen at this point. And, and the thing is, is that the Iron Age gives us the gifts of technology, which we won't need in the Golden Age. And so technology has sped everything up. If you're a follower of Marshall McLuhan, you know what I'm talking about. It's technology has sped information and communication so fast that the politicians can't even keep up the, with, you know, they'll have a private conversation between three people and it'll be on the internet in 20 minutes. And, and, and this is going on everywhere, and this thing is going to reach a point where it's going to be so weird by two years from now that you're, you're not even going to believe it if you don't find what's going on right now pretty weird. So, um, that's, I don't really have much more to say. Uh, what time is it? Anybody know? Oh, good. We've got, we got time to take questions. Good. So, so we're reaching this point at the end of time. And it's coming. It's not the end of the world. It's the end of this age. It's coming now. It's here. Anyone who didn't believe it at the last 2012 conference probably is starting to believe it now. And when we have another one in eight months or six months, that crowd will believe it even more. And this is going to go on and on until everyone firmly believes what's happening. And it's one of the reasons we're doing it. So we're there ahead of the curve so that I believe that the people that rule this world, the the controllers are fully aware of this and fully aware that something is coming okay and that's why they have homeland security and all this crap that they're putting on us because they're trying to watch us because they can't trust us and they're afraid we're going to rebel I have my serious doubts but uh, maybe if we took all the Prozac away and uh, so um, uh, uh, that's what's going on, and um, I, I think we need to face it as the most exciting thing that's ever happened. It's a positive moment, and it's not the end of the world. It's the creation of a new world. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Iron Age. 6,500 years. Yeah. No, that's the Golden Age. It's the only time. Okay. The secret of alchemy is how do you turn lead into gold? Okay, okay, this is how you turn lead into gold. And by the way, you can actually turn lead into gold, but I'm not going to get into that. This is how you do it. In, in, it's, notice how it, when, when we go from the golden age to the silver age, it's not much of a change. It's kind of a, you know, you probably wouldn't even notice it. And even when you go from the silver age to the bronze age, you're not even going to notice it much. But when you go from the iron age to the golden age, it's like that. It's, it's in a second. And it's a complete reversal of everything that was going on. In fact, it needs all the stuff that happened before in order for it to unfold.
You need to have the internet. You need to have globalization. You need to have uh, international marketplaces, not for commerce, so we can talk and compare notes, so that we know what's happening, so we know what the Mayans are thinking. We know what the Peruvians are thinking. We know what people in New Guinea are thinking. We're on the internet. We're talking to them. We now know for the first time in history. And so we're going to pop through that other side, and not everyone's going to make it. Okay, But we're going to pop through that other side, and we're going to be in a golden age. Now, we have an analogy in your own life, by the way, to this. This is one of my favorite parts. You're born at the very center coming down, okay? Just like in a birth canal. And you're born, and the first 18 years of your life take from that null point at the center to the equator on the outside. You understand me? Half of your life is in your first 18 years. You understand? Because time is relative. The next 18 years, till you're 36, go from the equator to where you start falling into the lip. The, ne and now, and the next 18 years, until you're 54, are uh, from the Bronze Age till you hit the Black Triangle. And from 54 to 72 is that part. And believe me, I just got to be 55, and time is going so fast, I can't even believe it. I'm, I'm like afraid to wake up. And... <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. And you know how you were when you were 18. I mean, it took forever to get asked out on a date or for work to end or school. And, and that's how it is. And so your own life, you can see that time is relative even within the structures of your own life. And, and, and so the earth is kind of... Um, uh, one of my favorite books is Childhood Zen by Arthur C. Clarke, and I think that's really what's going on. We're, we're, we're reaching a point where we're losing our um, childhood. Are, we're going to become mature. And it's the baby boomers. One of the great things that Daniel Pinchbeck says is that in the 60s, we didn't really have very many mentors, our, the 60s generation, and he was right. Um, but now we do. And, and it's us. And we are the people we've been waiting for. Where have I heard that? And, uh, um, and, uh, and, and, and so the younger generation finally has you know, the few loose nuts who survived uh, to be able to advise them and tell them what to do. And, um, and that's what we're here for. So a few more? Yeah. Yeah, it's called Urban Half Past Human. Thanks. Yeah. Half Past Human. Get it? Hey, turn off your cell phone. Half past human, yeah. See, because we're going to be half past human soon. Get it? Yeah, we're going. We're moving beyond human. That's what's going on here. Yeah. I, I didn't catch it. What was that? <laughs> I wouldn't put a dime in the market. Me, um, I buy land and uh, a lot of food and uh, seeds and, and uh, I don't need much. I mean, I really don't. So I, I, I just, I'm, I'm hopelessly uh, fiscally responsible. So what can I say? I don't even have a credit card that I use. Yeah. Yeah. Lead into gold in an instant. And it's going to be, it's gonna, there's going to be a huge lead up to it and it's going to be flabbergasting. Uh, skyastronomy.com, uh, astronomy.com, uh, any good, just type in Google Sun, uh, what do they call it? Um, magnetic field, heliosphere, 2008, October, and you'll get it. Okay, I'll take one more and then I gotta go. Yes? See, that's exactly what happens at the end of time. Everybody forgets what they're saying. It's like, it's like Timothy Leary said, I don't have to smoke pot anymore, I'm senile. Um, <laughs> you get up in the morning, get the paper, and you, can't, you forget to get it, and go out there and there's three papers waiting for you. So anyway, I gotta go, but go ahead. You got We do. Reality, and we've done a really bad job. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yeah. That's right.
Well, everything is a dream. This world is a dream. And you're dreaming. And we're all dreaming. We're having a dream. And when you wake up from your dream, it's called lucid dreaming. And I lucid dream all the time. And I know I'm in my dream, and I know I'm dreaming. And I'm usually laughing hysterically at the ridiculous stuff I'm seeing. And, and, I, and, and I know that I'm dreaming now. And I know that this is a lucid dream. And by the way, I'm laughing hysterically. At what I'm and so once you understand that, you're, you get in control of your life. And I, I didn't learn this from you know, a, a voodoo doctor or something. I learned this from a guy who has $7.5 billion. This is what he does every day. He has his own universe, and it functions exactly the way he wants it to function. I'm saying that we can do that on a collective level. And, you know, if a billionaire can, if, a guy, if an orphan can make a billion dollars, we can have a better world. All right. I guess I'll introduce John. I'm going to introduce my next, the next guest, my good friend, John Major Jenkins, extraordinary scholar, Mayan guy. He's right over there. Oh, okay, I can take one more question while you get the slides going. Any more? Okay, you in the back, because you had your hand up about ten times. That, that's right. That's right. That's what it's measuring. And it's just a clock. We don't know if the galactic alignment is any more, than, than, any more important than the two hands are up at 12 o'clock. It may just be a gigantic cosmic clock. That may be all it is. I don't think so. I think it's more than that. But that's maybe all it is. And it's saying, wow, when the hour hits 12, the heliosphere of the sun disappears. All this, all this uh, intergalactic material gets through, and the human race is transformed in a moment. Yep. Well, um, first off, knowledge is in power, wisdom is power. And because, um, you know, you can teach a three year old how to shoot a gun, doesn't mean it's a good thing. Um, so, uh, um, but basically, the tried and true methods yoga, meditation, eat right. Don't let the world destroy you. Don't listen to them when they tell you that you're nothing. Don't listen to them when they, when they try their, their fear tactics. The George Bush scared the living daylights out of everybody. We're never going to get out of, of uh, oh, what is it, yellow? We've been at yellow on the, on the terror thing for like four years. Like, can't we go to green for just one day? I mean, <laughs> you ready? Three more. 